Good morning. How y'all doing? Y'all ready to go? I'm ready. You ready? Okay, let's stand to our feet and honor our God. He's not dead. He's alive. We, save a, we serve a risen God, all-powerful God. Let us look to the Lord and give him thanks and praise this morning. Father, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. And we thank you, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for your presence. We thank you, O oh God, for these thy people. Lord, we come to give you, to offer you the fruit of our lips, to give you praise to give you honor, to give you glory, to worship you, to bless you, to honor you. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we love you today. We love you today, Lord. We love you today because you woke us up this morning with the activity of our limbs, God, the blood is running warm in our veins. We are breathing the oxygen that you provided. You gave us transportation to get to the temple. So the least we can do is give you praise this morning. When we think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, our souls will cry out, hallelujah. We thank you, Father God. We bless you, Lord. We thank you, Father. 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 Oh, glory to your name for who you are. You are the Alpha. You are the Omega. You are the beginning. You are the end. You are the first. You are the last. You are the Savior. You are divine. You are glorious. You are almighty. You are the conquering king. You are everything to us, O oh God. And we bless your name. We thank you, O oh God, because you are food for our very souls. You are clothes on our naked backs. You fill us with your Holy Ghost. We are grateful. We are grateful. We thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Open your mouth and thank him. He's so good. He is so merciful. He is so kind. He is almighty. Conquering king. Our righteousness. Our bulwark. Our savior. We bless you all today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God, for sending your son, Jesus, to take on our sins, to pay the ultimate price for our salvation, for our redemption, for giving us life, life eternal, life here on this earth. We bless your name, O Lord. We thank you, O God. We bless you, O Lord. We lift you high. You said if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw. I will draw. I will draw. I will draw all men unto me. Jesus, we love you. Jesus, we praise you. Jesus, we love you. Jesus, we love you, Lord. We lift you, Lord. Lift you high. We glorify you. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, glory to your name. Oh, thank you for allowing us to be in your presence. Because in your presence, there's fullness of joy. In your presence, 
there's mercy in your presence. There's healing, deliverance, being made whole in your presence. There's fullness of joy. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you as we come to this temple to worship you, to praise you, to give you the honor and give you the glory. We know, God, when we leave here, we won't be the same. 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 Bless your people. Bless our leader. Uphold him with the right hand of your righteousness. Uphold her with the right hand, my lady of his righteousness. Uphold your people. Hallelujah. We give you praise.
the setting of the same From the rising of the sun To the setting of the same From the rising of the sun Yes, he keeps on blessing me. 
when you face death at one point in time you didn't really care if you celebrated your birthday you didn't really you know give no thought to it but when you stood in the face of death and didn't think you were going to see the next day it changes your outlook on life hallelujah and even in the bed and everything that could have happened he still kept us he extended grace towards us hallelujah he extended mercy toward us grace for some stuff we didn't deserve but mercy for some stuff that should have came our way but he was so gracious hallelujah how to not let it be so i'm excited oh god i just hear it he never saw fit to let any of those things be Hallelujah, and I'm grateful for my leader on today. Hallelujah, I'm grateful. Churches are closing their doors all the time. Hallelujah, and yet he gets up Sunday after Sunday. Hallelujah, hear a word from the Lord to deliver to us. He's up in the midnight hour, early morning. Hallelujah, he's rip running and racing regardless of what it is this membership have need of. He's up praying, he's giving, hallelujah. 
He'll cut the grass, hallelujah. He'll, one day, what was he trying to do? I can't even remember what he was trying to do. And somebody was like, that ain't your job. I just need you to seek the Lord for me. I'll take care of that. Hallelujah. And that's what we have in a leader that he, will, he can serve and will serve. But just some things I don't expect my pastor to do. Um, hey, forgive me. Don't forgive me. I mean that. There's some stuff I don't expect my pastor to do. Hallelujah. And at my former ministry, there were certain times of the year, you know, we got together to bless the leader. And I remember Missionary Vivian Hendricks used to always say, Christmas ain't move. His birthday ain't move. It's come the same time every year. And we ought to be prepared to be a blessing to him. So I am asking um, those that can, his birthday is June 27th. Um, and I'm asking everybody that can to premise in your heart to bring an offering for our leader. I am asking, I'm putting a price on mine. I'm asking for $100 to give to our leader. He don't ask for much. He oftentimes will give more than he receives. And I think it's only befitting if we come prepared to be a blessing to him. Do I got any help in the building? And let me say this. If you don't have $100, you can't feel some type of way about what you don't have to give if you genuinely don't have it. But what I learned is we also learn to spend money on what we want to. So let me tell y'all something real quick. So you know how I said a minute ago, when you face death, you see life a little different? Man, listen, I took my whole filter off after death. <laughs> so I'm gonna say it and I'm not gonna apologize for it. We spend money on what we wanna spend money on. I'm serious. I saw it when, when we were in Jamaica, I saw you know, people will spend money on, when I looked at some of them prices, listen, I sat through a three hour tour because I didn't want to pay $400 for a massage. So I gave them three hours of my day so I could get a $500 massage. I ain't had no money to give them, but I gave them a little bit of time. I ain't doing nothing on this island. Let's go and walk through these, <laughs> through these rooms. But we want to, amen, again, premise to be a blessing to him on the third Sunday in June. <coughs> which is um, the 20th. We want a premise to be a blessing to him. And I'm asking everybody that will to give him a $100 offering. Um, there is a um, There are brown envelopes that we can give everybody for your seed. If you choose to give electronically, I ask that you please denote what it's for so the finance team will know where to allocate, um, allocate that to him. Um, Y'all know all the ways to give. Speaking of which, we're getting ready to prepare to give. Amen. Amen, because giving is a part of worship. I go ahead and take care of that while I'm up here now. Amen. Giving is a part of worship. I can recall, I, we tell a testimony in Bible study, but I remember the first time I, I learned what tithing really was. And um, growing up, my grandma used to give me a hundred, uh, give, no, she gave me a dollar. And I would put it in an envelope and I would take it to, she said, what she said to me was, take this envelope and give it to Miss Bernice. So in the Baptist church, we used to have a lady that sat right here with the little table and you brought the money to her and she was recording as she came. So I did what my grandmother told me to do. <clears throat> I put a dollar in the envelope and took it to Miss Bernice. The part she didn't explain to me <laughs> was that it was a dollar because I had $10 allowance. So I was giving a 10, but she didn't explain that part. So I was full grown with one with a full-time job putting one dollar in an envelope and proudly walking it to the front. And I can recall that there was a Sunday where um, my pastor at the time, Bishop Posey, he used to ask all the tithers to gather in the aisle and he would anoint us as we brought our tithe to uh, as unto the Lord. And I just got, if y'all know, any of y'all been in school, y'all know what a refund check is, right? Okay. So I just got my first refund check. It was $8,752.37. You talk about somebody was hyped, because ain't nobody ever gave me that much money at one time. And I stood up with my, in my envelope, and Bishop Hosey said, will a man rob God? You betcha he will. And tithe and offering, which is normal, because he done said that every Every Sunday, then he said, one tenth. That's all the Lord asked for, and he trusts you with the other 90. And then I said, 
you know, I'm, I'm an accountant by trade, so I know what a tenth is. That's 10%. And I'm like, what I'm doing with this dollar? And then I said, well, <laughs> that's when it hit me that I had this $8,000 check. And I said, you mean to tell me you want me to go, <laughs> you want me to go give $800? $75 and 23 cents in this envelope. I don't know her divorce of the Lord clear as day. Either you're going to trust me or you're not. Either you're going to give it or you're not. It's a faith walk. Ain't no flowery bed of eaves. Ain't no guarantees other than prove me now here with saith the Lord of hosts that I will pour out, open up the windows of heaven and pour you out blessing. There's not room enough to receive. He promised to rebuke the devour for my sake. And every nation shall call me blessed. And let me tell y'all, ever since that day, I have never not tithed. I am that person. You give me a gift card, I'm pulling $2, $20 card, I'm putting $2 on an envelope. Because I believe the word of the Lord. I believe it just that much. I, when I think about, you know, when everybody looks at the financial side, but I think about some of the things that go on in my body and the fact that the Lord himself promised to rebuke the devourer doesn't mean I wouldn't get sick he just let me know it wouldn't destroy me so meningitis came a brain tumor came COVID came and he didn't let it consume me that is the word of the Lord for our hearts so I encourage you folks trust him in your giving I ain't mean to get up here and say all that but I share it from a place of you can't be God given. And we heard it growing up. We sang it. As, as I brought my dollar up, I sang it. But it didn't live for me until it lived for me. Amen. So with your offerings in the hand, we're going to recite our offering decree. Hallelujah. Repeat after me. This is my good seed. And I sow in the fertile ground. And by faith I decree. I will never be broke another day in my life. Open up your mouth, give God glory, hallelujah, for the decree unto the Lord. And you can pass your offering to your right and to your left. Thank you, Jesus. I believe the word. Hallelujah. He got too many promises for me not to believe it. Hallelujah. He's proven himself too many times for me not to believe it and to stand on it. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. And they've not all come to fruition, but I'm just that crazy to believe that the God who made heaven and earth, the God who let the sun rise and let the sun set, the God that gave us breath in our bodies and blood in our veins, hallelujah, and the activities of unlimited men being clothed in our right mind is going to do just what he promised. Hallelujah is unto us. Amen. Amen. Now I'm going to ask you to rise on your feet all over the building as we celebrate our leader, our pastor. Hallelujah. He might be bishop to everybody else, but he's pastor here in Harrington. Help me celebrate Bishop C.D. Cannon Sr. As he come and deliver the word of the Lord unto our hearts. Bless you, Bishop.
I have to realize I'm not as young as I used to be. Thank God for your prayers, those that I don't I don't like people falling out over me, so by the time y'all hear I'm sick. I'm well. <laughs> Amen. But thank God for those uh, that reached out, those that prayed and asked if they could do anything. Let us go to the word of God today. Uh, thank God for my wife. I knew she was going to say, she said, can I have something to say this morning? She was going to say all that. And I'm, it's right to do right by your leader. I don't, but I don't like, I don't like stuff like this. I'll tell you why. Because that's when you find out who really love you. I'd rather think you do and you don't. Than, than find out that you really don't. right to bless your leader. Amen. Whatever you do for your leader, God honors. Uh, Acts, uh, we're still staying in Acts, y'all. Uh, Acts, the first chapter. And just for the sake of uh, time this morning, I'll start at the seventh verse and read verse seven and eight in its entirety. In Acts, first chapter verses 7 and 8 and he said unto them it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the father hath put in his own power but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea and in Samaria and into the uttermost part of the earth. You may be seated in his presence. Uh, and ye shall be witnesses unto me. If I was to preach from a subject, uh, it's time to take the stand. It's time to take the stand. We are preparing for Pentecost Sunday. Uh, I believe next Sunday is Pentecost Sunday. And it represents the outpouring of God's spirit upon a man, a generation of people who have the opportunity of following and serving God through Jesus Christ. But it is the coup de gras of our foundational beliefs, if you will. Uh, no, no matter how many verses of scripture you can quote, uh, it is important that you have the Holy Ghost. Uh, the Holy Ghost is not just something that causes emotions to rise, but the Holy Ghost is a sustaining agent that we all need to get through this thing called life. If we would be honest with ourselves on this morning, those of us that have the Holy Ghost, uh, we could not have made it this far without him. Amen. He has kept me. That is enough to praise him. I know I'm not where I want to be, uh, but as I look back over my life, I can thank God that I am not where I used to be. And I can testify that it's because the guiding hand of God on my life, he has in fact sustained me. Jesus here is preparing his disciples for what is to come. Jesus knows that his assignment on earth is just about up and he has to go back to Bible says the right hand of the Father, but the assignment must go on. 
he, he knows that uh, the last three years that he has spent on earth, uh, it is his hope and it is his prayer uh, that they, the disciples, would uh, capture some of the essence of Christ, whereby they can go and tell someone uh, what it is they had gleaned from Jesus. Jesus says here that uh, you are to be witnesses unto me. The text says that it's time to take the stand, not a stand. Uh, it's time to take the stand. And, and, and when you hear the terminology, the stand, one of the first things you think about is uh, a court of law. Being a witness to something, uh, you have to uh, take the stand, uh, and you have to uh, put your hand on the Bible, and you have to swear uh, that you're telling the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you, God. Yeah. A witness, by definition, uh, uh, is an individual who being present personally sees or perceives uh, and subsequently gives testimony. I'm going to say that again. Y'all pray for me. I'm going I'm to holler before I get done. A, a witness by definition is an individual who being present, someone say present, personally sees or perceives and subsequently gives testimony. Sometimes a witness is the only source of critical information. You cannot testify to that which you do not know. Are y'all with me this morning? You cannot speak on what you have heard. You can only speak on what you know. Uh, I thank God that I had a praying grandmother. Yeah. Had it not been for her prayers, I'd probably be dead, sleeping in my grave. But my testimony is about the relationship that I had with Jesus. It was her prayer that got me to him. But it was my prayer that got me to where I am today. Walk with me, children. Most of us in here this morning have someone uh, throughout the annals of our family lineage that have been responsible for us being in church this morning. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Most of us, most of us had a praying grandmother, my grandfather, uh, mother was a praying woman. Uh, mother sent you to the church when they didn't even go to church. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And, and, and you appreciate that. Uh, but when you say it's time to take the stand, uh, you have to thank God for them. But you now have to embrace the fact that um, I need to have my own relationship with God. Now, most of us have said, when I get grown, I'm getting out this house. I need to see life for what it really has to offer. Are y'all with me today? So the Holy Ghost uh, in the text is going to give them power uh, to be witnesses of Jesus Christ. Whether we like it or not, all of us at one time or another will find ourselves on trial as we go through life. The only thing that's going to get us the proper verdict is the proper testimony. You got to know him. 
I mean, know him past emotion. You got to know him past movement of feet that goes in syncopation with the beat of a drum. You got to know him. I think it's hard for people today to get to know him because of the examples that they have seen. That's why it's incumbent upon every believer to know him for yourself. Are y'all with me today? In other words, that the disciples would have power to sanctify their soul to serve as a witness to draw other souls to Jesus and to work miracle signs and wonders. In other words, when you have right relationship with Jesus Christ, he gives you power to sanctify yourself. We don't need a revival. We don't need a prophet. We don't need an apostle to come and tell us to get ourselves together. But my brothers and sisters, when you have the gift of the Holy Ghost on the inside, you don't need folk in your business. The Holy Ghost is your business. Oh, I'm starting to feel my help now. When you have the Holy Ghost on the inside, the Holy Ghost, in fact, is your comforter, your ruler, and your guide. When you have the Holy Ghost on the inside, you don't have to ask someone for their opinion. The Holy Ghost through the dunamis power of God will in fact give you uh, his opinion. You don't, you don't have to ask someone, is the skirt too tight? The Holy Ghost will tell you. You, you don't have to ask someone what came out of your mouth was it appropriate. The Holy Ghost to tell you. And I believe one of the problems that we have with the church now, we're getting opinions from people who do not have the Holy Ghost. And because they don't have the power of the Holy Ghost, then we are going off of something that should not be able to testify in a court of law. Are y'all with me here? And the Holy Ghost gives you the power to get yourself together. Mm -hmm. I got on the scale this morning. Y'all have to pray for me. Uh, I was a little confused. I don't know if you're supposed to feed a cold or starve a cold. I don't, I don't know which one it was, but <laughs> I pray my strength for the Lord. Uh, I was eating everything this week. I was drinking everything this week. I was trying to get this thing out of me. Uh, and I happened to gain some weight. And when I got off the scale this morning, I said, that don't make no kind of sense. And something said to me, it don't make no kind of sense, but what you going to do about it? A lot of times in our walk with God, we'll have things that won't make no sense, but what are you going to do about it? Because I'm just convinced here this morning that a lot of stuff we blame it on the devil has nothing to do with the devil. It has everything to do with us getting ourselves together, sanctifying in our soul. Can we just talk this morning? I said, can we just talk this morning? If we had the Holy Ghost, there were some decisions that we have made over the course of our life that would be opposite to what we have done. Well, maybe not y'all. But me, had I had the Holy Ghost, some things I would not have done when I done them. Because, you know, some things I was grown when I did them. Couldn't nobody tell me nothing. Ah, but now, uh, when I make decisions that are uh, uh, detrimental to my life, I, 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 I console with the Holy Ghost because I don't want to make decisions that waste time. I don't want to make decisions that got me going all the way around the mountain. I don't want to I don't want to make decisions that cause me to put more gray hair in my beard than is already there. I need the Holy Ghost to sustain me. That's why it's so incumbent 
upon every believer to have the power of the Holy Ghost on the inside so that you can be a witness that it's not about my credit score, it's not about my money, but it's about the power of God that's on my life. And I can testify that God has brought me here. And because God has brought me here, somehow, some way, God is going to keep me here. Do I, do I have a witness in the bill? Is there somebody here this morning that knows that God has brought you here? And, and if you know that God has brought you here, he's going to He's going to keep you here. So not only does the Holy Ghost give you the power to sanctify your soul, but the Holy Ghost also gives you power to draw other souls to him. I said the Holy Ghost gives you power to draw other souls to him. You've got to ask yourself the question, uh, why can't I draw anyone to Christ? Preach, Bishop Cannon. I'm getting ready to preach through sickness. Now, when I say drawing people to him, yes, I would like our church to grow, but I'm just convinced everybody not going to come here, but they got to go to him. We got to get to a place, not just in the temple, but on our job and in, in the community. We're speaking well of Jesus Christ. We can't just shout on Sunday and cuss on Sunday night. We can't fall out in the... Oh, God, help me here. We you can't fall out in the spirit on Sunday morning, but, but fall out in the flesh on Monday morning. We got to get to the place where we say, God, not just in the temple, but go with me on my job. When I punch the clock, go with me. When I'm in the Walmart, go with me. When I'm in the mall, go with me because some, somebody needs to see the saving grace that's upon my life. And they can testify that the same God that did it for them can be the same. God that can do it for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's time to take the stand. You, you got to ask yourself the question, is my light on? Is my light on? I remember years ago when a person got saved, they told everybody. It's a little quiet here now. When folk joined the church, they told everybody. When they had a little touch, they told everybody. Now, we don't want folk to know. You don't need to know I'm saved because when I'm sucking on a hookah hose with you, I don't want you to look at me a little strange. No, no. You don't need to know I'm saved because when we're turning tricks together, I don't want you to look at me kind of strange. No, baby. That's what the Holy Ghost does. The Holy Ghost takes the taste of sin out of your mouth and it puts something else in your mouth. Y'all ain't going to help me preach, but I'm going to come through here this morning. When you have the Holy Ghost, it, it is a refresher in your life. And it makes you want to tell somebody that if he can do it for me, he can do it for you. I'm going to start showing up at some of y'all jobs next month. I'm going to ask your coworkers. Do you know brother so-and-so? Yeah. Brother? What do you mean, brother? He's your brother? <laughs> you know, do they talk about Jesus? Yeah. And I got to say it. You can talk about Jesus without even saying his name. You can talk about Jesus without saying his name. Don't go to work tomorrow. No, no, no. No, no, because you're going to get laid off. You'll get laid off for a couple of days. But you can let your light shine. In a dark world, somebody will say, what is it? What is it about? What is it about John Parker? It just makes me smile when I see him. What is it about Deacon John Parker? When I come to work with weight on my shoulders, it feels like the weight is being lit. What is it? about John Parker that makes me smile when I'm heavy laden on the ends. What is it? Uh, God, that's how we, we want to be, my brothers and sisters. We want folk to be able to, I can't quite put my finger on it, but it is something. I want folk to be excited when they see me walk in the room. I don't want folk to say, oh, dang, oh, here we go again. 
here we go again. <laughs> they talking about they God's children and they cussing. Here we go again. Yeah, we on the backside of the office and the smoke break and they smoking with me. Here we go again. No, honey, there's one thing that I have taught my church for years, that if you can't be delivered, at least be Y'all hear my teaching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you got to get to the place where your light should be brighter than your past. You ought to be able to testify what you used to do when the light was off. Got a little quiet. Because some of y'all can't testify. <laughs> mm -mm. You can't say God will keep you. You're not being kept. They'll say that's inadmissible. We don't receive that testimony. We want to be able to testify to the world that God is in fact the keeper. Now, now I, ha I have to say this, I have to come through here uh, because our old church that we came up in uh, as children, most of us, we equated being kept with being perfect. And that is distinctly two different things. And most of us have been led to believe that if I make a mistake, then I'm not being kept. God can keep you if you want to be kept but it does not negate the fact that I am still a human. As much as I want to lose weight, Mother Walker, as much as I'm going to do my best to eat right, there's some Krispy Kreme donuts on my desk that after the benediction, I am going to partake because I'm not perfect. I'm trying to help somebody. I'm trying to help somebody because if, it, can I say something that's going to offend a couple of y'all? That's why some of us are jacked up now, because the old church taught us to do something that the teachers weren't doing themselves. Don't tell me to keep my legs closed, and every three years you go into New York coming back with a cousin. That's what they did. That's what, actually, that's what they did. Back in the day, the old ones, they, they was hot to try too. Mm -hmm. They played hide and go get it too. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. They got pregnant and they had two options. Talking about we going to New York for the summer. Come back talking about that's cousin Leroy. That ain't cousin Leroy. That's your nephew. Hallelujah. Are y'all with me? So, 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 so we have to draw other souls. To Jesus. Not to a personality. Not to a personality. Everybody don't have to look like we look. They don't have to dress like we dress. They don't have to do what we do. Because somebody got to tell me what that is. I think we should do a book. I think we should all get together and do a book. Uh, it, it could be a picture book, yeah, and and we can, and we can put the explanation of it, like, what does that mean? Brian Martin. Yeah, that's the Patty Labelle. <laughs> This world that's on trial. The church is on trial. Because more people now will go to Ayana Van Zandt before they come to the altar. More folk now will go to self help gurus than they come to God. And I was taught to bring your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. I told, I told somebody the other day, I told somebody the other day, 
that victim has a look. Uh -huh, victim has a look. All you got to do is just scroll social media. Victim got a look. Uh -huh. Folk that always post stuff about them being needy. Victim has a look. Or people that always post stuff about being victorious when they always down. Victim has a look. Come on now, you've been in God for 20 some years and you still at the start line. Victim has a look. And one thing about victim having a look, some folk would rather be pacified by church folk than being blessed by God. And I don't know about you, but I'd rather be blessed by God than folk patting me on my back and folk speaking well of me. No, baby, I got to get to the place where I can testify that what's going on in my life has nothing to do with people, but it has everything to do with God. So I need this power. I need this Holy Ghost. As my Brother Walker's going to wear her white on <laughs> next Sunday. I might, I, might put my, I might put my robe on next Sunday. <laughs> but that's not the power. <laughs> the power of God is something that's going to sustain you, uh, Greg Parker, when the weight of this world gets heavy. We got to be a witness. Somebody say be a witness. You, you got to understand that a witness can help to build a case or a witness can help to tear down a case. Are y'all with me here? You, a witness can help build a case when you testify that I was broke but I trusted God. A, a witness can help build a case when you testify that I was sick, but I trusted God. A witness can help build a case when you say, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil because you're going to win. <laughs> Come on, y'all. I'm still a little sick in my body. <laughs> Take your right hand and slap it on yourself. <laughs> Say, I'm already winning. <laughs> I ain't even started the race yet. <laughs> but I done already won. <laughs> I ain't got my doctor's report back yet. <laughs> but I'm already here. <laughs> I'm still behind in some bills. <laughs> but they already pay. Because <laughs> the grace is not given to the swift and neither is the battle given to the strong but the Bible, the Bible, the Bible declare that it's given to the one that can endure what do you mean sir I'm going through a midnight experience I don't know who to trust don't know who to talk to but I heard that if I call on the name of Jesus late in the midnight hour he will hear my prayer do I have a witness in here is there anybody here on this Sunday morning who has ever had your back up against the wall went to try to talk to people but they didn't have the right answer for you tried to work it out on your own but they didn't have the answer but you had a little talk with Jesus told him all about your trouble and one thing you got to realize that God already knows what you have need of even before you ask it can I preach like I feel it I said he already know what you have need of even before you're already asking in other words you are already here yeah the way has already been made yeah I know we ain't supposed to touch nobody that's why you gotta touch yourself and say come on self we gonna come out of this thing I feel like preaching this ride you got to find a way like David did the Bible declared that David had to encourage himself in the law yes you got to make up in your own mind that for God I'm gonna live and for God I'm gonna die no weapon that is formed against you 
shall prosper. <laughs> and every tongue that rise up, <laughs> God shall condemn. <laughs> In other words, if you learn to hold your peace and let the Lord fight your battle, victory belongs to you. Can I preach like a feeling? I know you want to cuss. Cuss everybody out. And I'm not talking about ass, hell, and damn. But I'm talking about the good cuss words. The ones that make you feel good about yourself. The ones that put your spit put a put a put a, 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 a pole in your back y'all know what I'm talking about and another thing but sometimes when you're on the stand you gotta hold your peace I want to fight but I'm gonna hold my peace I want to tell everybody where to get off at but I'm gonna hold my peace I'm gonna trust in the law until I die. Say it. Yeah. Say it. Yeah. I got the clothes, but there are a few ways we are expected to be a witness unto the law. The first way in through our mouth, because out of our mouth there is life and death and it resides in the power of the tongue our mouth should be filled with the praise of God and hold fast to the promise moreover than controversy or criticism in other words out of your mouth you gotta speak life. I am more than a conqueror. I am already victorious. I am the lender and not the borrower. I am the first, not the last. Out of my mouth shall flow rivers of living water. Out of my mouth, I gotta speak peace out of my mouth I gotta speak power out of my mouth I gotta speak joy say yeah say yeah and not only through our mouth but through our labor must we be a witness unto the law Jesus sir let me say it again I said, Jesus, he served. No matter the condition, no matter the climate, he served. Jesus did not have a respect of person. He healed the sick. He fed the hungry. He did whatever needed to be done I got the clothes but Paul help me preach Paul picked it up and he wrote and whatsoever you do do it heartily as unto the law and not unto men knowing that the Lord shall receive the reward of the inheritance for you serve the Lord Christ. In other words, I don't preach for an offering. I don't preach for a man. I don't preach for a packed house. But I preach because the word says if I be lifted up from the earth. I'll draw all on me unto me. Black men, white men, straight men, gay men, rich men, poor men, all need the love of Jesus Christ. Say yes. Yeah. I am a witness that he picked me up turn me 
around place my feet on a high ground I'm here because he loved me I'm here because he brought me I'm here you can do but we're expected to be a witness of what God has done we don't want the Holy Ghost just to brag about it but we want the Holy Ghost so we can talk about it As the hoe. As the hoe. I wasn't the only one. But as the hoe. And God sent the Holy Ghost to the land of Hodom and brought me out. Hallelujah. I was a wretch undone. I was, I was a wretch. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know we had guests in the back. I'm sorry. I was a wretch, though. God sent the power of Jesus to the land of wretchedness and found me. He said, come out from among them. Ooh. Oh, yeah. I was a midnight rambler. Late in the midnight hour, he found me. I don't like this kind of preaching. Yeah. Everything that I was, I can talk about it. Oh, then that, that's one thing. You can't talk about it. You got two more years, and the Statue of Limitations. Then I'll tell you. But every other thing I was, watch this. God sent his love to where I was. He sent, he sent his love to where I was to get me. That's why we don't look down our saintly nose at people who don't got it like we got it. Y'all ain't talking. Folk gonna come to church, they're not gonna smell like you. They're not gonna talk like you. I don't expect you to cuss. But they might cuss. And you don't make them go back to the back of the bus to the end of the line. You embrace them. Just like the word of God embrace you. Hallelujah. You don't, my grandmother would say, you don't clean the fish until you knew my grandmother. She knew your grandmother. You don't clean fish until you get them in the boat. Y'all ain't talking. You don't, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't. You don't have little sidebar meetings with folk. When they come to church, what's your name, sir, in the back? No. 
Jimmy Carlos real? You know. You, you look you look like a Javier. That's your husband. You know, big strapping man too. Did you enjoy the service? You gonna come back? My man. I mean, you, you don't you don't go to Carlos and say, hey, 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 uh, before you come back, you gotta come the next time with a suit on. And you you a punk. Cause you won't even say that's your mind. You're gonna say, you know, Bishop expect you to be in a suit. They'll, they don't, they'll put it on me. No, you come as you are. Now, let me, let me real quick. When Jesus in the Bible says, come as you are, it has nothing to do with what you wear. Come as you are is your heart. Come as, come as you are is wherever you are in life, you ought to be able to feel like you can be welcome in the house of God. And we make people feel unwelcome. That's why your testimony can't be received. You know, I set them over there in the corner because they smell like sex. Number one, how you know what sex smell like? And number two, I didn't bother your funky behind when you came, when you first came smelling like sex. You ain't gonna talk back to me. And if you gonna smell like sex, smell like fresh sex. Y'all not come to church on Sunday smelling like you did it on Thursday night. Because I got a problem with that. Yeah. Hallelujah. Witnesses. Through our lips. Through our labor. Y'all laughing, but you'd be surprised at folk that I have talked to that have left church. Not, not, not this particular church, but have left church. And some reasons why they said, I'll never go back to church. What you mean you can't be around somebody uh, 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 when they drink it? What you mean? What you what you mean? You don't have you don't have that much Holy Ghost. You don't have that much. You don't have that much Holy Ghost. Cause I'm gonna tell you, who wanna know what happened when you got the Holy Ghost? I dare somebody say me. You wanna know what happened when you got the Holy Ghost? I'm trying to be. got the Holy Ghost, how many times have I ever asked you to not drink around me? How many times have I ever asked you to not cuss around me? I'm a pastor. Drink. And cuss. And guess what? There's been some time that he's done it and I've been present. But he'll stop. And not once we had one conversation about it. Y'all busy going out here having conversations with people. Let the word, let the love of God do the work. Y'all can't even get nobody come to church from across the street. This man came all the way from church. I'm, I'm talking about being on the stand. See, see, we want church to look like us. But did you forget how you look when you came? The last two years of my life have been so eye-opening for my ministry because I thought the church had to look like me. But when you build a relationship with Muslims and folk that you view as sinners, we don't get arguing about stuff. We just love one another. Let the love of Christ draw. He said, if I be lifted up. No, don't go to work tomorrow. Talking about, Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. 
Don't come in my office and get no oils. Talk about I'm going to anoint my supervisor's car to the desk. Ain't gonna be the... How about you anoint your mouth first? How about you anoint your mind second? Because some of us can think some trifling stuff. Folk come to church because they want change. I go to McDonald's because I want... Never mind. So, <laughs> through our lips, through our labor, the Holy Ghost came. They praised God. But the Holy Ghost came to prepare them to do the work. Yeah, oh, we're going to get the work in this house. House. Yeah, we're going to get to work. We're going to shout and dance next Sunday, but baby, we're going to get to work. We're going to feed the hungry. We're going to clothe the naked like we've been doing. Some of y'all know y'all ain't getting back to pre-COVID week. I ain't calling no names. Let me see. You got clothes and you still cry? It ain't going to happen. You got clothes in your closet right now that somebody else can. Now, let me help you. Let me help you real quick because this is, I'm going to tell you how to do it and I'm going to tell you how not to do it. All right? You don't, you don't come to church next Sunday. Tell my, bro, Carlo, pray Lord. Pray Lord, bro, Carlo. Listen, I, I, I got some clothes that I brought. I don't know if you can fit them or not, but try them on. If you can't fit them, just, you know, pass them down the line. I just want to get all my house junked. That's not how you do it. You don't even go to Carlos and say, hey, I got some suits for you. Would you like them? And you never spoke to the man before. You build relationship with him first. Then you say, think about wearing a suit. And if he say no, put a period there. Leave it alone. That's it. If he says, yeah, but I don't have the money, then you go buy him a suit. And don't shh. And don't buy him no suit your man wouldn't wear. Even though he ain't your man. Because see, we quick in the Pentecostal church giving folk hand me down. We, this is what we say. I was cleaning out my closet. That mean you want to give me your trash. How does that make a person feel? See, I was homeless before. I know. I, I still got a right to have my pride. I know who I am when I come to church. I don't need you. Uh, never mind. I'm done. Through our lips, through our labor, through our life. Our life should be so people are drawn to us. That man right there that started out as my mentor. Then he ended up being a friend. Now that's my brother. That's my brother. I, I told him the other night, his family, my family. My family, his family. That's, that's, that's how your life should be to people. You have no respect to person. You don't build relationships with what you perceive they got. You build relationships for what they already have. Through loyalty. Just because stuff don't happen the way you think it ought to happen, you don't give up on God. You don't retract. I told somebody the other day, I said, you're going to bust hell wide open. They said, why do you say that? I said, because you don't know what you want to be. You're going to bust hell wide open. 
the worst thing in the world a person can do is be in a, a confusement to people who want God. You can't be a confusement to them. Hear what he will say. Hear what, what Solomon is going to say. What Carlos is going to say. Y'all see a picture on social media. Me with old hoes in my hand. Preaching the gospel. What's he gonna say? I know what Carlos gonna say. Just like all the rest of us. I know what Solomon's gonna say. That's why I don't go down. I ain't gonna tell you what else I'm gonna say. The songwriter said, and I'm done. Don't give up on God. Because he won't give up on you. And see, some of y'all getting upset and frustrated because you feel like God ain't walking with you. Most of our parents or grandparents had that poem on their wall, Footsteps. Talking about it was two sets of footprints walking down the beach. And then I looked down one day and it was only one set of steps. And I felt like God had forsaken me. God had to say, shut up. The steps you saw wasn't yours, they was mine. But some of y'all feeling like God ain't there for you, shut up. I mean, not my senior folks, shut up. Shh. God is carrying us. Some of y'all are doing more things now than you ever thought you would have in your life. It's because God is carrying. To whom much is given, much is required. I've learned now that no matter what I'm going through in my personal life, somebody else needs me more than I need myself. I got a Bible. At any time, Jesus could have came down off that cross. Anytime. But he understood there was somebody that was going to need him more than he needed himself. We got to take the stand. We got to take the stand. Somebody needs you. Somebody needs you. Could you, could you imagine if you met the needs of the people that God sent? We'd have to have two, three services. We'd have to send folk to the church up the street. We got to testify. Jesus said, and you shall be witnesses unto me. It ain't about your money. Nobody care you got an 800 credit score. You still got 800 Whatever is probably seven ninety nine. <laughs> she'll, she'll tell you. Ain't about my credit score. God is keeping me. Quit. Oh. Only what you do for Christ will last. Hold fast to that which you already know. Weeping may endure for a night. But if I could just make it to the morning, joy shall be my portion. God, we thank you today for what our ears have heard and our hearts have felt. Trust and pray, God, something that's been said or done has been edifying to these, your people. Help us to be witnesses of you, God. Help us to tell a dying world that you still save, you still heal, you still deliver and set free. God, I pray for everyone that can hear my voice today. It's not for me to know what they need, but they do need you. I pray now, God, that you would dispatch your ministering angels to everyone 
meet the need in their life. But unspoken prayer requests, God, that they haven't talked to nobody about. Touch them in the name of Jesus. Help us through the power of the Holy Ghost, God, to let our light shine in this dark and sinful world. Help us to be the bridge, God, that can help bring other young men and women over to you. Do it, God, not for self-aggrandizement. Do it, God, not for a new title. But do it, God, so that you get the glory out of our lives. In the name of Jesus. Look upon those, God, that are watching at home or watching at their job. They might not be in the temple with us, God, but they are still connected in the spirit. Hear their prayer. Hearken to their call. Meet every need in their life. In the name of Jesus, have your way in us the more. And if you do these things for us, God, we'll be so ever careful and mindful to give your name the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless y'all all real quick. Uh, we got dinners today, I think, from 11 to 3. I'll be leaving at two to go to Maryland. Uh, anybody that's going, just let me know. We'll go over, have a couple words, then uh, we'll be back here. A uh, prayer tomorrow at six. Bible study Thursday. Uh, I think that's it. Amen. Uh, is the cameras off? Bless y'all.